everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. This week we are getting into the recorder and orchestra. Now I knew that there were a lot of pieces where the recorder and the orchestra feature together, but until I started researching for this video, I didn't really realize how much. There are so many. I've made a selection today of things I find important and inspiring. If I've missed out something that you find essential, please share it in the comments. So the first thing, people ask me a lot, does the recorder play in the orchestra? And when they ask this, I think they mean the kind of 19th century symphony orchestra that you hear all of your romantic music being played by. Uh, to cut a long story short, no. <laughs> the recorder just wasn't there in the symphony orchestra. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't feature in other types. An orchestra is a large group of musicians playing together. It's not only the 19th century symphony orchestra. You also see Baroque orchestras, obviously, from an earlier time, more contemporary settings from today with more unusual combinations of instruments, string orchestras and chamber orchestras, which is um, a smaller setting. <laughs> Bodil agrees with me, and today we're not going to discriminate between the types of orchestra. Some of them will be chamber, string, symphony, baroque. So, where we do see the recorder playing together with an orchestra, it's in two roles, either as a soloist, your kind of concerto, or as part of the ensemble itself. There is a third category, which I don't have time for today, and that's the phenomenon of recorder orchestras. That's a whole orchestra made up of just recorder players. And while that's a really interesting topic, I'm not gonna go into it today. Maybe another time. First up, we're gonna look at the concerto. A concerto is where you have a soloist, or sometimes more than one, playing very impressive, virtuosic stuff with the orchestra as their personal accompaniment. There are a lot of concertos for recorder, mainly in the Baroque period and the contemporary period. First up, we have possibly the most famous Baroque concerto with recorders. It's Bach's Brandenburg Number no. 4. Bach wrote six of these Brandenburg concertos, two of them, number two and four, feature recorders. By the way, I'm showing you the videos like this because it's easier for me to edit. I have a baby. Uh, but everything is on YouTube, so I'll put the links down below so you can go and listen. Brandenburg's probably the most well-known recorder concertos are those of Vivaldi. They're really fun to play. I've played the C major number 443 before and it's a lot of fun. Here I'm going to show you a version of Moritz Steiger playing it. This video stirred up a bit of controversy on Facebook because it's very fast. <laughs> Lucy, she's great. Here I'm going to show you her playing the Sammartini Recorder Concerto. As you can hear in a concerto you have the tutti sections where everyone plays together and then the more solo sections where the soloist goes off on one and the, uh, the orchestra are really just accompanying. And another absolute classic you have to know uh, is Telemann, Telemann, Telemann. Telemann wrote a few recorder concertos, con concerti, uh, but his one for the recorder and traverso flute is really well known. <laughs> Thank you. 
So for Baroque Concerti, those four are really the ones that stand out to me, but there are so many more. I'm just going to put here a list of other ones that I've found upon my researchings, though it's definitely not exhaustive. <laughs> If you'd like to try playing a concerto, a really good one to start off with is uh, the Concerto in G by Baston for soprano recorder because it's fun but it's not too crazy difficult. So that's a good one to start off with. Apart from Baroque Concerti, we also have a lot of contemporary ones and these tend to be with um, more diverse styles of orchestra. <laughs> You also see the really big symphony orchestra. So I'm gonna show you a few of these. Firstly, a very beautiful one called Moonchild's Dream by Thomas Koppel, performed by Michaela Petri. You might be thinking, how does a recorder stand up to a whole symphony orchestra in terms of volume? And I'm looking at what Michaela is playing. I can't really tell from the video, but it's either an Eagle recorder or a Mollenhauer modern one. But in any case, it's a kind of adapted modern recorder that will be a bit louder. After this, we have my it's a little bit cheesy, but it's my all-time favourite modern recorder concerto. It's the David Bedford Concerto. By the way, if you have a local orchestra and you want someone to play it, ask me, because I would love to perform this. with string orchestra and it starts off with bass and goes gradually higher and higher and higher. Bass, tenor, alto, soprano, sopranino. The one I really want to show you is the Graham Fitkin recorder concerto. This was recently written for British recorder player Sophie Westbrook. But it's not on YouTube, so I can't. Sophie, please put it on YouTube. Someone who has had a million pieces for recorder and orchestra commissioned is Eric Bosgraf. Um, he was so kind as to send me a whole list of the pieces that he has played for recorder and orchestra. I'm gonna put them here. Here's a little snippet of him uh, rehearsing the concerto for recorder by Willem Yetz. Someone else who does a lot of commissioning for recorder and orchestra is of course Dan Lauren. These were his um, many concertos for the Eagle recorder by Giel Meiring. I was like bouncing there, I think that was probably really annoying. Of course, it's not only the concerto where you find the recorder and orchestra together. First of all, you've got Baroque Opera. Even though the Baroque Opera Orchestra size is a lot smaller than your symphony orchestra, I consider it to still have the same kind of role because you've still got all those different families of instruments together. They are really creating a big sound and a big hole. So the recorder is featured a lot in Baroque opera. Uh, my favourite to play has always been The Fairy Queen by Purcell. And I like this style of editing. I'm also going to put a few more Baroque operas here that you can check out. Da -da 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 -da. And of course, aside from opera, the recorder was also used in Baroque orchestras, um, in suites, symphonias, dances. Often instrumentalists would double the recorder and another instrument like the oboe. The recorder wasn't used in every piece, but they'd often be used to denote a dance or a pastoral scene or some birds. Something really interesting that I found on my research travels was that uh, recorder player Nick Tarasov, remember him from the Brandenburg Concerto, has done a lot of research to show that Mozart used the recorder in no less than 17 of his works, orchestral suites and opera. That is really cool, Mozart recorder. 
And of course, coming to the present day, the recorder is an ensemble member in contemporary ensembles and orchestras. Today, our definition of orchestra has changed somewhat. It's not as rigid. This number of violins and this number of trumpets and whatever. Um, often we have a much more eclectic mix of instruments together. And why not have the recorder as part of it? Uh, I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I played in. This is a piece I played in recently by composer Brecci van Dijk. It's called Element. I'm, st I'm sitting over here. So we had a kind of chamber orchestra setting, but also with guitar and mandolin, recorder, shakuhachi, iwi, drums, uh, as well as your orchestral instruments. And in this piece by Brechtje, you don't notice it, um, but I actually mic'd myself up. I had a small mic on my recorder and then I put a small amplifier under my seat. So it didn't even sound like it was amplified. All the sound was still coming from my area, but it just gave me that little boost over the louder instruments. So this is a piece for Chamber Orchestra by Irish composer Dara Kearns Hayes. I was actually playing Tin Whistles. <laughs> from Bodil. So now I've mentioned some pieces but there are so many more out there. I'm going to give you a few resources now if you'd like to look further to listen or to play this music. I have a book to recommend for you. I think that's very handy. It's called The Orchestral Recorder by Edgar Hunt and it has a whole bunch of orchestral excerpts for recorder from Bach, Handel, Britain. After this, if you want to find pieces, I would recommend going to the website blockflout.org. In the historical section, you can search for concertos or pieces with orchestra. When I searched for Baroque Concerto, 223 results came up. I think some of these are duplicates, but that's still a lot. And then when you have found the piece that you would like to play, go to imslp.org because if it's a Baroque piece, it will certainly be there. Uh, and you can download it for free. If it's a modern piece, please buy it from the composer because composers need to eat. <laughs> and to listen to works for recorder and orchestra, remember these names, Michaela Petri, Eric Boscraft, Dan Lauren, and basically everyone I've mentioned today. That's all from me today. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. Over here is a link to the Team Recorder Patreon where you can choose to support the channel. In the description is a link to the Team Recorder web shop where you can order my CD. And over here is a link to my interview with Lucy Horsch where she talks about recording the Vivaldi Concerti. Have a great day and thanks for watching.